This video is sponsored by Mint Mobile. Check out the link in the description to get three months free when you subscribe to any three month plan. I have been using Mint Mobile myself for well over a year and I have saved an insane amount of money, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars. It is the service I will continue to use for the foreseeable future. Time is running out on this deal though, so do, like I said, check that out via the link in the description. We haven't talked about the Windows subsystem for Android on this channel for a little while. And if you don't know, WSA is basically Microsoft's way to let you run Android apps on your Windows PC. This rolled out sometime around the time that Windows 11 came out. And honestly, a big reason is because it's kind of not been all that exciting and it's kind of been like a bit of a muddied water situation because there's actually a couple of different ways to run or to have these apps on your computer in one way or another. And I actually think one of them is a bit better, but it has its own problems as well. There, there's really no like perfect solution uh, to this problem right now. This video, we're gonna talk about an update that is in beta, which is going to hopefully improve this a little bit by bringing Android 13 to WSA and also some bug fixes and some just general improvements. And we're gonna start there with this article on XDA. So this beta now running Android 13 has a few things. So there's a new command that shuts down WSA for automation because when you start this thing up, it has to like literally start up Android essentially in a shell kind of in Windows and then your apps run in that. It works pretty well, but there is you know a boot up process and then a shutdown process. Improvements to mouse click input because I mean, yeah, Android isn't necessarily built for a mouse and then you're dealing with a situation where you're running Android that isn't built for a mouse inside Windows, which is built for a mouse and things get a little bit wonky with that. So that has to be fixed. Uh, improvements in clipboard stability, right? So, you know, we're talking about clipboard on your PC and clipboard in Android in this shell. You copy something in Windows and you paste it in Android. That's cool, but it's been a little bit unstable, perhaps. Improvements to resizing. It's in a floating window. You can scale it, stretch it, whatever you want to do. And it has to intelligently resize. Upgraded to Intel Bridge technology for Android 13. Reliability improvements to media files opening in Windows. Jump list interest replications supporting app shortcuts. Microsoft is also claiming that the boot up process could be about 50% faster, which as I mentioned earlier, is a pretty big deal. Now, when all this stuff was still kind of coming to fruition, it was something I was fairly excited about, right? The idea of having Android apps running side by side on your Windows tablet, something like a Surface Go or a Surface Pro device. You know, one of the biggest problems with these devices is that the store just doesn't have a lot of apps in it. Granted, you can download whatever program you want, but a lot of them aren't great for touchscreens. Well, Android apps are great for touchscreens. So it made sense to me that that would be really cool to have these Android apps. And if you look at, you know, Chrome OS and the, and the execution there, I think Android apps have been a boon. It's been really, really nice to have on Chromebook. So again, I thought this made some sense for Windows as well. However, when you ask around, which I have, are any of you using Android apps on your Windows 11 PC? Most people are not using it. Most people are not using it. Maybe they only tried it once, the vast majority. And then only a few people are using it occasionally or otherwise. Another version of the exact same poll with more votes and basically the exact same response, except it's even more straight up no. Now, you also have to bear in mind when you dig into some of my comments here that a lot of people were saying yes, but they were saying yes with a caveat because they weren't using WSA to do this. They were using another solution, which, like I said earlier, is good, but does in fact have its own set of problems, of course. We are talking about the phone link application, which can be installed on Windows. And this is something that is, you know, quite cool, right? So I'm connected to my Z Fold 4 and I can pick an application like the Play Store and double click on it. And it's going to open up in a floating window, which can be resized and it can be interacted with. Granted, it can't be like you can't change the aspect ratio, just just resizing it. But still, you can do all kinds of stuff inside this. So a lot of people that voted yes in the comments said yes, but with phone link, not with WSA. And I think there are some really good reasons why that might be the case, why people might be turning to phone link to run their Android apps on their computer versus using 
WSA. So with WSA, yeah, it's running natively, but honestly, the apps don't run all that well because it's like it's like an emulator for like a retro game console, right? The thing that's doing the emulation has to be many times more powerful than the device it is emulating in order to have decent performance. And it's a similar kind of thing here, where in order to have good performance in these Android apps, even a computer like mine that has an i7 and a 1070 Ti and 32 gigs of RAM, the apps get a little bit wonky sometimes. You also have weirdness with input. The input just is sort of strange. Using pinch to zoom in my experience was really, really odd. And phone link, the scroll wheel does that and it works absolutely fine. So when you're using WSA, there are just weird things about using mouse and keyboard for your input. If you're using a touch screen, they're both okay. But again, I find that the performance is just not that great. And then you have that boot up process, which, you know, they do say that they are trying to speed up, but it's not as fast as it is on phone link at all. And then you also have to contend with the fact that any app you install, you know, you have to sign in. You have to make sure that it's signed in and synced up with what you're doing. It's as if it's a brand new device with phone link. That's not the case. Any app that I'm going to launch through phone link is the exact same app. If I launch Pokemon Go, I don't have to go sign in to Pokemon Go and do all that nonsense. It's the exact same Pokemon Go that is on my phone. Granted, I don't know how well this is actually going to work, but I guess uh, we can look at it here as I'm talking. But my point here is that it's the exact same app. It's already synced up. My point here is that it is the exact same application. And even with, you know, the fact that I'm streaming it here, you know, there's a little bit of a lower frame right here than, than you're going to get when you're just playing it natively on your computer. But it's running fine. This is totally fine. There you go. A great throw. The synergistic aspect of this, I think, is really, really important. It's just really easy. The apps are on your phone, and then you play them on your computer. It's it's just easier. I am also noticing literally in this moment that a problem that had been a real issue for phone link for me, apparently at some point in the recent past has been fixed. Before the sound would come out of your phone, even if the app was on your computer. Now the sound is coming through my computer. So all the better phone link has just gotten. So you know multimedia applications, TikTok, YouTube, whatever you want to you know put on your PC screen. That's fantastic. That's even better than it was before. You also have to contend with the fact that to install all apps on your PC using WSA, you're using the Amazon App Store, which is still absolutely barren in terms of app selection. There's nothing in there. You are sideloading applications, which is not super difficult, but it's still a lot harder than it is to install an app on your phone and then run it through PhoneLink. PhoneLink also has the ability to just straight up cast your entire phone screen, which I use all the time. All that being said, there is a big problem with PhoneLink, and it's that this app streaming ability is not available for everyone on every phone. Unless you're running certain Samsung phones, Microsoft's Surface Duo, I think there was a deal to bring this to Honor phones, but I'm not sure if that ever actually happened. If you're not on these devices, you can't do this yet. So there's problems there as well. And that kind of summarizes the situation. You have WSA, which has a lot of problems, not a lot of apps, some weirdness going on. Microsoft is continuing to improve it, but it's not nearly where I would hope it could be at this point. Then you have phone link that has a ton of advantages that I really, really like, but almost nobody can use it unless you're using a Samsung phone or a Surface Duo. You're not going to have access to these features. So Microsoft still has a lot of work to be done. I do think phone link is a big part of their future plans. They really want to integrate Android and Windows more and more. So these features are likely to roll out to more phones eventually. But when that's going to happen, we don't know. When is WSA going to you know get to a point where... You can just go and download whatever app you want. Probably never because they don't have access to the Google Play Store or Google Play services, which is another huge problem for WSA that for me kind of ends things because there's a lot of apps that I would like to be able to use that I just would not be able to without Google Play services. And I don't want to have to sideload stuff. I don't want to have to do all that stuff. So WSA is not in a usable state for me. Phone link is, but only because of the phone that I own. So either way, definitely a suboptimal situation that I hope does continue to improve. Let me know, are you using either one? Tell me in the comments down below what you think of this situation. If it makes any sense at all to run Android apps on your computer, any interest in this at all, let's talk about it in the comments down below. Guys, I'll see you on the next one. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.